Okay, so here I have the 2021 iMac. This is the first new iMac design in nine years or even 12 years if we take a look at the front. And it's great, like it's incredibly fast thanks to its M1 chip. It's got this amazing 4.5K Retina display and more importantly, it looks stunning, at least from the back. I am still not a fan of this really thick chin, but the back looks really nice. Now, this iMac is only the small 24 inch model. The larger 27 inch model right here hasn't received any updates in 2021, which puts the iMac in this really weird spot. As if you want the new design with a super thin frame, you have to go with a smaller model. But if you want the performance, you have to go with the older design as this is the only one that has a dedicated GPU. Which begs two questions. Number one, when is the 27 inch iMac going to be updated? And number two, how will it look like and what specs and features will it actually have? Well, thanks to the fact that Apple has now released both the fifth generation of MacBook Pros as well as the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, I actually have a pretty good idea of how the upcoming larger iMac will look and be like. So design-wise, I'm almost certain that we would get an iMac that looks almost identical to the smaller M1 model. And like I said, I'm still not a fan of this massive chin, but since Apple decided to add a notch to the new MacBook Pros and the large chin to this new iMac, I do believe that anything can happen. Even an iMac with a chin and a notch. Okay, just to clarify, that was a joke. Apple, if you're watching this video, don't get any silly ideas. And since Apple has actually downgraded the design of the new MacBook Pros in quite a few ways, like I said, they added the notch and they're also thicker than the previous models, it does actually make sense for Apple to apply a similar approach to the new larger model of the iMac. So imagine this iMac in space gray with a larger display and very likely a thicker body as well to accommodate the more powerful components. I'm very certain that this is how the new Pro iMac would look like. Pro iMac. iMac Pro? Well, they've actually used this naming scheme in the past and I can definitely see them using it again on a machine that would be technically designed for Pro users. But okay, what would make this upcoming iMac a Pro model? Well, it's usually three things. One, more ports. Two, more performance. And three, a Pro display. So let's start off with the ports. This current 24 inch model isn't doing too well in terms of this. As you can see, our baseline model only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and that's it. That's exactly the same as on a MacBook Air and considering that this is a desktop computer, well, it's not great at all. Now, if you buy the higher end model, you do get three more ports, you get two extra USB-Cs, uh, which are not Thunderbolt by the way, uh, and you get one ethernet port built into the port adapter. So that's better, but still not great. So what ports would an iMac Pro have? Well, I'm actually very convinced that the new iMac Pro would have this configuration of ports. So three Thunderbolt 4 ports instead of two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one SD card reader, which would be mounted on the side since as you can probably see, there just isn't enough space on the current model to have it on the back. The 24 inch model is just too thin and even a slightly thicker iMac would still struggle to fit an SD card. Then one HDMI 2.0 port, a 10 gigabit ethernet port, and one high impedance headphone jack. Now, why am I so sure about these specific ports? Well, that's because this new iMac Pro is rumored to have the exact same M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, just like these new Mac Pros do, which means that the new iMac Pro would support at least the same ports as the MacBook Pros. The only extra port that I believe Apple will be adding is that 10 gigabit ethernet port, and that's because we had it on the 2017 iMac Pro, we have it on the Mac Pro, and Apple has even added it onto the M1 Mac Mini. And since this will be a desktop class Pro device, I'm very certain that Apple will give us this option. Okay, so mostly the same design as the 2021 24 inch iMac, just in space gray, larger and with more ports. So I think the big question here is, how would it actually perform? Will it have any performance advantages over the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros? Well, we've been testing these new MacBook Pros behind the scenes for the past few weeks now. Our big benchmark video, by the way, is still in the works. Uh, we ran into some issues with our game-changing custom scripting tool, but I did have a good chance to test a couple of things on these new MacBook Pros. And performance-wise, the M1 Max chip is pretty insane. So right here, I have an 8K 60 frames per second project with some red raw footage. And not only is the 14 inch with the M1 Max able to play the project back perfectly smooth, but as you can see, it can even do so in full quality. And the thing is that even if I put two 8K clips side by side, I'm getting about 15 to 20 or so frames per second, uh, which is not that great, obviously, but when you consider that this is a 14 inch laptop and I'm technically previewing a 16K project, that's just mind-blowing. And now if I drop the playback quality to 
better performance, as you can probably see, it's pretty much real time. Actually, it is real time. I'm not dropping any frames. And in terms of the actual picture quality, this looks as good as quality mode. Uh, just because the footage is so high res. In fact, this 14-inch MacBook Pro right here is more powerful than our maxed out 27-inch 2019 iMac with an 8-core i9 9900K processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and a Vega 48 dedicated GPU. So if this is the performance that we get from the M1 Max inside a 14-inch MacBook Pro, what could we expect from it inside a full iMac body? Well, the chips themselves are going to be the same as in the MacBook Pros, so M1 Pro and M1 Max, the only things that would be different would be the cooling system and the power draw. Therefore, I think that a good way to gauge the performance differences between the M1 Max MacBook Pro and the M1 Max iMac Pro would be to compare the 14-inch against a 16-inch MacBook Pro with the same M1 Max processor and see if we get any benefits from having more thermal headroom on the 16-inch model. Both of these machines have the M1 Max with 32 GPU cores, the 14-inch has 64 gigabytes of RAM, while the 16-inch has 32 gigabytes. And I'm just going to run a quick GFX Bench off-screen test. And this is surprising. So despite the 14-inch having double the video memory, the 16-inch actually got a significantly higher score, 310 frames per second versus 267 on the 14-inch model. That is 16% more on the 16-inch model. Not only that, but I can also tell that the 16-inch is noticeably cooler to the touch, whereas the 14-inch is indeed quite warm. Okay, and here I have our S21 Ultra versus Pixel 6 Pro camera comparison. This project is 15 minutes long, and as you can probably tell, it is full of effects and titles and just side-by-side -side shots. So it is pretty demanding, and this is also uh, H.265 footage. And I'm going to export both projects in H.264, and it seems like the 16-inch finished in 10 minutes and 8 seconds, while the 14-inch took 51 seconds longer, or 8% longer. And just to give you guys an idea, our maxed out 2019 27-inch iMac took just around 40 minutes to export this exact same project. Now, of course, that will have way more benchmarks, so make sure to subscribe for that. But from these quick ones, we can already tell that the M1 Max does actually perform about 10 to 16% better in this larger 16 inch chassis with the better cooling system. Which means that in an iMac body, the M1 Max could perform at least 10 to 16% better than even in a 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is pretty substantial. Not only that, but since the iMac Pro won't be a portable device, Apple would not have to limit the power draw anymore, so the M1 Max could actually use more power than the 40 watt limits that we currently have on the 16 inch model. So this combined with the more powerful cooling system would actually make the iMac Pro the most powerful Mac ever made. But I actually don't think the performance improvements over the 16 inch model would be the main reason to buy the new iMac Pro. I think that the main reason to get uh, the iMac Pro over something like a MacBook Pro would be that display. So this iMac right here has an outstanding display. This is a 24-inch 4.5K Retina display. It's crazy sharp. It's also very bright at 500 nits and I love it. But this MacBook Pro right here has a much better display and that is because of two things. One, ProMotion and two, Mini LED, both of which I believe to be coming to the new iMac Pro. So ProMotion is great as it makes everything feel twice more fluid than on a standard 60 hertz display, but this is not what I'm excited for the most. And that's because ProMotion is great on a phone or a tablet when you interact with the device using fast-paced gestures. But when you're using, I don't know, a computer with just a mouse pointer and you're just navigating through the windows, you don't actually feel that speed as much, unless of course you game. Speaking of that, we did a full video about gaming on the new M1 Max Max right here. Anyway, what I'm saying is that Mini LED is a far bigger upgrade than ProMotion is. Not only do we get a significantly higher brightness for when we're watching uh, HDR content or editing HDR videos, as you can see right here, but we also get massively improved black levels, which is great for when you're editing as you get better uh, color accuracy, but it's even better for when you're watching a movie as it looks almost as good as OLED does, just significantly brighter. So imagine this image quality, but on a massive 30 or so inch display. That would be, that would be incredible. However, if you're still not sold on this new iMac Pro yet, I think the next thing that I'm going to tell you is definitely what's going to sell it for you. And that is, of course, the price. So right now, this 24 inch iMac is 
literally an outstanding deal. Like you cannot get a better computer plus this great of a monitor for $1,300, which is the starting price of the Simac. The closest display of this quality is the LG Ultrafine 4K, which costs $700, more than half of what the 24-inch iMac costs. The new iMac Pro, however, is set to start at $2,000 or just over, according to leaker Dylan DKT, which would actually match the mid-tier configuration of the current 27-inch model. Now, this new 16-inch MacBook Pro starts from $2,500, so I am a bit skeptical of the new iMac Pro being less expensive than the base 16-inch, especially considering the gigantic ProMotion mini-LED display, which will very likely be the most expensive component by far. And in fact, Apple's own Pro Display XDR, by the way, costs a whopping $5,000, and it doesn't have ProMotion or as many local dimming zones as a true mini-LED display does. My guess is that in the best-case scenario, the new iMac Pro would start at $3,000 for an M1 Pro model with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, which might actually seem like a lot, but for pros who want the power of the M1 Max, or in this case M1 Pro, attached to essentially the best monitor that you can buy, then the iMac Pro would be the perfect choice. Oh, and I also see Apple releasing an updated model of their Pro Display XDR, as it would literally make zero sense to buy one anymore if you can get a better display with a full iMac built into it for almost half the price. A model with either better specs than the iMac's display or a model that's far less expensive than the iMac, that's what would make the most amount of sense to me. But do let me know what do you guys think about this new iMac Pro and stay tuned for more Mac coverage in the upcoming days. I'm Daniel, this is Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.